<laughs> have you had or do you have any formal education in art and if so where formal education formal education in art paano ba natin yung class in art in painting ganun. or any art degree in general or sige siguro the key credit siguro yung ano no uh, bachelor of fine arts advertising yeah. so UST and then painting no formal training i took up like one lesson under fernando senna senya you on oil, on oil pastel That's it. how long have you been working as a professional artist yeah means you're paid, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, high school, if I was, if I had my first paycheck in high school, how old was I again? I was uh, 13, 13, 14. 28 years! Wow. So, what are some significant projects that you were able to work on during your career as an artist so far? Artist overall, pinak significant. Siguro ano is is getting that grant in Chicago in 2015. Um, I'd like to be underrated. Um, I also like to explore the human condition, and my art is not consistent at all. It, it changes every year. I did a couple of elements. Um, the major element was the Carabao armor. Um, the, uh, the second visual element is the portrait. Um, it's the beauty queen, the blue one. Um, it's actually a portrait of uh, our comedian Dolphy. I primarily wanted to still mold with my counterparts and try to instill a sense of identity and nationalism and make them understand that um, Coming from where you are is very important. And um, the values um, that are practiced in our country should still be practiced here. Because it's not every day that you get to exhibit in the Field Museum, right? yeah. let alone like the last Filipino who's, or something Philippine that was displayed there was like 50 years ago. So, yeah. Well, it was, uh, no, it was not really that celebrated because not a lot of people were aware about it, but it's fine. I mean, it happened. Yeah. So you work primarily as an illustrator or painter, but you've told us also that you've tackled some graphic design projects mm -hmm. a few years back. So what are some projects with graphic design that you've made? Wow. Um, Watch the dog. It's mostly an yan. Um, some. There are some brands. I don't think I designed design for brands. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Most of which I can't remember. One of them is a mind museum. But I was an uh, intern, meaning parang I wasn't wholly. Um, it, it, I mean, I can't claim it as mine, but I came up with the name. And then accidentally also with the symbol. So I guess that would be the most credible part. The others would be um, stuff that I do for uh, NGOs and LGUs. Uh, before it was Worldwide Fund for Nature or WWF Philippines, UNICEF, ano pa ba? stuff to do with the environment, stuff to do with children. Um, I gave workshops also designed for that, designed the, those workshops as well. So I guess that also um, credits and legitimizes design. Um, packaging, none. We'll have to go through uh, posters. Yeah, I've done some posters as well. One of them was for a play that became, no, it was a movie Muna and then it became a play and then it became a movie again. Uh, Temptation Island. So yun. Temptation Island from the 70s and then just one of those uh, ano, samples. I can't recall all of them. 
Um, so, why do you prefer illustration and more traditional painting media as to working in graphic design? Mm, right. Um, one, it, it's because you know how to do it when you draw it um, on paper is something that I, I mean, it's quite natural for me to plan something vector. Parang, I mean, people will say it's the same thing. You're just planning it on, on a computer. It's just not paper, right? But akin, parang, I don't see any charm when it's like super polished. I mean, I've achieved it when I planned it, so I, I like the planning process. But when it's coming to fruition now, when it's almost your final art, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's supposed to behave that way. It's a pay, paying client, etc., etc. But it doesn't really lend its charm off me. So I'm more really comfortable with doing things by hand and working with paper, you know, sharpening a pencil. All those menial tasks are important for my tactile knowledge it's just that ano lang talaga uh, have no appeal doing stuff on photoshop or anything i don't know it i don't understand it i would know its principles and an elements that i uh, that i can explain to you but to actually sit down and render it it's like nope not for me you know hours of staring at the screen and my back nope Thus, I enjoy painting more. I enjoy illustrating more. Um, I feel that my advocacy for illustrating for children hasn't been met yet. But, you know, there's time for everything. Painting, it's an ongoing process. I, I never, I will never stop. I will never give up. Even if I don't sell, you know. An artist has to realize his full potential. That's why, parang, I guess, I need, I still need to be one. So you talked about about how much you enjoy the planning process of making up an artwork. Can you elaborate on your own personal process? How you come up with ideas? Mm, okay. So we're all segmented into two parts. One is a paying client, something that uh, needs to get done, like illustration or graphic design, or a painting that needs to be um, a painting that's commissioned or um, stuff that I do for myself. You know, I come up with a show or my own children's book or something. I'm just chopping up the disciplines, graphic design, painting, and illustration. So if, what's the question again? Parang the process. Yeah, what's your process of coming up with an idea? Uh, coming up with an idea. So if it's a paid um, client for graphic design, of course, there's your usual thumbnails, Com uh, rough, compre, final, approval, contracts, etc. Down. That that's that. Um, their expectations have to be met. So you parang there, there is some sort of pleasure in achieving goals that are set. Um, when you've made your client happy, check. Illustration, same process. Check. Commission for a painting. There are those who. Um, I don't know if they're challenging me or it's something that they really like. They will suggest what they want. I'm lucky enough if a client says, No, we know who you are, just do your own you know, do your thing. We'll take it anything. Yeah, we just we'll just pay you this much and then just fill up white space. Go bala. And sometimes paganon, ako naman yung nihiya. <laughs> you know, there must be something you like, like um elephants. <laughs> Maybe we can put that in somewhere, you know? Para lang it's yours, you know. And then for my own, the process is much different. Cause it, wala time constraint ang ano dito. I I play on my own time, so parang I can attach and reattach myself to a project. Meaning parang it's something that I can come back to. Versus parang working on something that's being paid, the parang focus has to be on that because you need to finish a deadline. Whereas if you're working for a show, may deadline naman yan, exhibit mo, pero usually one year. So there's more time to simmer and then work. Um, so you've been in the industry for a long time. 
How do you set yourself apart from other Filipino artists and illustrators? When not being as noisy as them. <laughs> Social media is a monster. Parang I don't, I have no idea how to go around it. You know, it's not that anyone can manipulate the scene. Probably, siguro they, that's how they monopolize. But wala na. Sa akin na no, um, I've lost interest. So, it's a question again. How do you set Luby. yourself apart? Oh, and also, ano rin, um, oh yeah, a while ago. Well, in, so, syempre, in advertising, you study to competition. So, parang, you can adapt, you can do that in art, that can work. Um, pero, um, sometimes when you marry your disciplines, parang, some things don't really matter eh. So, para sa akin, um, I try to stray away from consciousness. So, parang, when, when everybody is wired in on one stream, then everybody comes up with the same subject. So, if I stray away from that, then it means that, collectively, if you look at everybody's work, you'll say na parang, um, pare pare yung theme, pare pa yung kulay, ganyan, ganyan. And then, one work is gonna stick out. So, what can you say about the graphic designer illustration scene in this country? Wow. Oh my god. Is this a trick question? <laughs> no. I might get into trouble with this. Hmm. It's... Uh... I think it's as comparable as other countries when it comes to um, its development and its function. So there are a lot of uh, graphic designers now who uh, really want to integrate uh, and define Philippine what the Filipino design is. So there are steps towards that. There are people, uh, there are design groups that are being formed. Um, ano ba? So yeah, ano siya? Uh, towards, um, ano ba? Towards its full development, there, there is a lot of, um, I wouldn't say potential, but there is development. You know? uh, yeah, how about the designers in like this scene? Oh, madami magaling. Uh, uh, pag nakikita ko naman yung mga trabaho nila, there is a nod naman and there, I know that they have knowledge of um, design spanning, you know, the years. So when it comes to parang sense of belonging to the future, they are able naman to carry that out there. So are there any designers that you think are particularly influential or significant to the scene, to the community? Filipino? Yeah. Um, I'm not really that immersed, but I would say my colleagues na lang. Kasi parang at least I see some initiative being, being pushed uh, for it. So there's, uh, there's, of course, there's Team Manila. Uh, there's um, si Dan Matutina and Jan si, and his design group composed of sila Raxine and uh, I forgot the name of the other girl. There's Brian Tenorio for fashion. There's Amina Aranas for fashion also. So parang this is a design team that wanted to sort of come up with a, a department of design for the Philippines. Pero parang Ang hirap niya kasi ng ipush because there's so much red tape. I mean, I, I don't get to be part of that design group because you know I don't really focus on that. I'm still more attached to uh, the fine arts, so parang I rarely delve with them, although they are good friends. So I see that initiative, parang de ba? Instead of the stupid MMDA art, parang at, there were certain parts there that were uh, certain parts there that. Uh, were more credible than the MMDA art. You know that part dun sa my uh, Magallanes, the one with the corals, mga sea life? 
That's by Bogie Ruiz, who's just, I know, he represented the Philippines sa Biennale, sa Venice. So, parang important yung work na yun. And then, syempre, pag dinadaanan mo, parang people think na, ay, bullshit lang naman yung mga corals na yun. What does it have to do with EDSA? Parang, dear, ang EDSA, bagay naging EDSA, Highway 54 yan. Bagay naging Highway 54, nung binungkal nilang buong EDSA, guess what they found? Corals and shells. What does that mean? EDSA was a beach. And you want to see proof? It's in my old school in Jasams. There's a tree there that only grows uh, in front of salt water. And it's there. And it has a plaque. And I know it's well preserved. It's a heritage tree. So that proves that Edson is a beach. So if you herald uh, our culture, then that's a good step for design. So we were given the opportunity to go through some of your past works. Would you like to explain <gasps> <laughs> why these works are important to you? Yeah, so uh, I'll start with Super T. Super T is a book that wasn't like published and sold. Um, this is one of the, f actually my first book project, ito yon. For, uh, for WWF Philippines. It's a story of uh, a pig. Uh, well, basically, the story tells us about uh, over excess. Kumbaga parang what happens if uh, you chop too many trees, of course, uh, may consequences sa environment, flooding, etc. etc. So parang they use the pig as a device for greed. Um, memorable siya dahil, syempre, first book ko, um, Pangalawa, it was fun to do. Champion, uh, when you see your first work out, it's like, wow. And then I became. Ito, this book is very special to me. This is an old cover. It's very special in terms of design. Because parang of all of the books that I, because I design the books then. Eh. Parang I I do the layout. Um, pero studies. I just give it to the graphic. I told you, I don't. Do shit. I just give it to the graphic designer as uh, compre, not final. Final art is the ano lang, the artwork. But when I come up with studies, nandyan siya eh. Dapat yung, oh Mr. Moss, there's a story that you might like. Okay, email it. Manuscript. Habang binabasa ko siya. Ato, ato. Dudrawing ko na yung mga characters. Pinaformulate ko na siya. Ganito ako mag-thumbs. Habang kinikwento yung eksena, habang kinikwento yung mga characters, dinadrawing, niluluto ko na kagad. Nandito na lahat. And then, read it again. And then, let's see if they still register. If you still wanna use the idea. And then, you start doing your cover studies. You start laying out your pages. Lahat na nakikita mo dito reflects here. This one is... This one. There it is. This one is this one. So it's very clear. And then this acts as your guide. And then when you're happy with it, and let's say this one, um, yung mga the ones in red, sulat yan ng, ano ko, ng publisher ko. Kasi pinapadala ko yung studies eh. Chinecheck nila eh. Character studies, other accessories. Kasi there's a lot of negative space if you just leave this here when the text can fit. So I have an advantage to fill it up. So meantime there are illustrations that aren't directly connected or mentioned in the text but you need to elaborate it more and make it more fun because habang binabasa ko to sayo, your eyes are going to be everywhere. Remember our lesson of what is this called again? Deep space. space. Deep space. So there's a lot of, there's deep space here na nakikita ng bata, parang at this, uh, in the foreground, sinabi na parang mga madre na nagbibenta ng mga turnips, parang minention ba na may boxes? Wala. Hindi nang ikot dyan, where are they gonna put it in? It has to be realistic. It has to have a life of its own. When you paint a picture, it has to correlate, all the visual elements have to correlate with each other and interact. So I was, I'm very proud of this kasi parang it's very British. Kung parang the way, the consciousness and how they design books na parang it should be busy, 
tapos parang I started reading about the science of book illustration na parang malikot ang mata ng bata it has to address to them blah 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 because they can't read who's reading for them the, the parents later on they'll pick up you know and then yung about flow about metering you know yung parang counting let's say okay for the first three pages all of the illustrations will be on the right all of the all of the text is going to be on the left and then you change the metering again it's like composing music and then you break in you show like um, a double spread and then you break it again and then you shift everything back text uh, text illustration and then break it again you see the metering that I did yeah. it's three one three one and then let's change the music let's put it here so parang your eyes are entertained yung parang I went to that extent na parang importante yung flow yung libro so yung parang you'll know that it's going to be a classic you know that it's going to be on a bookshelf for more than 50 years you know so yung parang <laughs> Even though it's not that significantly rewarding financially, parang at least you pulled off that feat. So, and then this one, the blue crab one, parang I did for WWF also. Um, they approached me for this project because there was a lot of overfishing for these crabs. Um, and then I did the manual in Ilongo, and I decided to yung design niya, um, sabi ko, why don't we Let's stray away from available text. You know, let me handwrite this. And you know, it's part of the design. Sabi ko, uh, they, they were asking, why do we need to, uh, no, to, to allow you to, to, to write the text instead of uh, coded na, di ba? Parang sabi ko, I think it's more, kasi ina-address mo dito, mangisda eh. So parang, it, doesn't it feel more personal if it's handwritten? Yung parang, it's not intimidating. Kasi yung parang, if, Siyempre, you want to look through the data. Parang it's something that they should learn about, you know. Um, the the consequences of overfishing. Yung parang they, they map it out. They, they show you what's wrong and what's right. Basically, yung parang, it's not that you're writing to monkeys. Yung parang, things have to work hand in hand. Um, it's called an illustration because it's um, a drawing. Uh, or a painting that's supposed to highlight text. It describes whatever you see visually is text that is being described. So it has to work on a level that what if these people don't know how to read? So yung parang what you have to present is something that is decipherable um, well, regardless if that person is educated or not, older or not, uh, older or younger, etc. Et so may mga basic ano yung design then you always have your ako pag when it comes to design I always ask who am I catering to so I'll know how to adjust na all of those meters in order to communicate well because that is the purpose of design to communicate everything that you told us about your um, long-lived career <laughs> in art <laughs> In your 600 year career. <laughs> 600 years. Ah, mapit ka dito. Iha. <laughs> ah, 30 pa na. Gusto mo talaga matuloy ang maging iha. <laughs> so, what is your advice to the young designers and students and artists out there? Know your history um, and explore your full potential. Mm -hmm.